In this video, I will be responding to the worst ultra kill review I have seen so far. Now, you've likely heard of ultra kill at this point since the game is widely praised for its original gameplay, but of course there are people who claim that this game is bad because it's not Doom Eternal. And no, that is not a joke. And one such individual is who we will be taking a look at today. The title of this video is Ultra Kill Act 2, a very stylish review, and comes from Under the Mayo. Now, this guy also made a video ranting about Ultra Kill's style meter and an Act 1 review, which was less of a review and more of a horrible skit where he tries to paint Ultra Kill players as psychopaths that are unable to take criticism. He also does a continuation of that skit at the beginning of this video, so I'm going to spare you the brain cells by skipping it. Also, expect me to compare this game to Doom Eternal a lot, because he literally decrites Doom Eternal and the majority of his arguments can be directly applied to Doom Eternal. But instead, he criticizes people for doing the exact same shit in Doom Eternal that he does in Ultra Kill. Just keep that in mind. Okay, let's get right into this dog shit review. Well, in a way. When the new Act 2 update came out, I was excited to try it because I heard about the change to the style meter. I've been saying for a while that one of Ultra Kill's biggest problems is the arbitrary nature of its style meter. Except it's not arbitrary. It's one of the three factors that rate your performance at the end of the level and getting the perfect score on all levels is required to unlock the secret level. That it should have some kind of impact on gameplay as a reward for engaging with it. They called me crazy. They said I should just be styling because it's fun. Wow, playing a video game for fun? Crazy. It doesn't need to be integrated into the combat. Well, here we are with a new version of Ultra Kill that rewards the player with better health regeneration through the style meter by speeding up the reduction of hard damage. Hey, that's a great idea. I feel like I've heard it somewhere before. Oh, great. Now he's gonna suck his own dick. There's so many things you could do to make the stylish mechanics actually mean something. Maybe the style meter tied into a health regeneration system. So, you're welcome, Ultra Kill players. I'm happy that I was able to make your game better. Me alone. Excuse me, but what? Where in that clip did you propose reducing hard damage taken based on your style meter? Oh, wait, you didn't. You just proposed a very vague and general idea which can be implemented in a million different ways, but <laughs> go off, queen. I'm sure you're going to enlighten us just how much better your game design philosophy is than what the developer had in mind. Hard damage is accumulated as you get hit and temporarily lowers your max HP. As your style meter increases, this hard damage is reduced faster, making it easier to survive. The style meter itself has also been rebalanced to reward weapon freshness, decreasing the amount of style points you get for just abusing one gun, encouraging variety, which is another excellent change, this is what I've been asking for. I personally still think the game needs a huge redesign to make ammo limited, with traditional pickups around the arenas and a style meter that regenerates ammo so you're rewarded with infinite ammo from a stylish performance. So in short, this guy wants this game to be Doom Eternal. Listen, I like Doom Eternal but not every game needs to implement the same design philosophy from that game. Adding ammo management to ultra kills simply wouldn't work and it would require the game to be completely reworked. The game is simply not designed around ammo management. Because without it, the first four chapters of the game continue to suffer. It's still a runaway charge pistol spam fest for the most part. So let's get into that. Does this update do anything to change my mind about the broken nature of Ultra Kill's design regarding infinite ammo, triple air dash, and charge shot pistol? No, it does not. Because it doesn't need to. Charged Pistol can be theoretically used to kill every enemy in the game, but then again, so can the Doom Eternal combat shotgun. Or, better yet, the pistol that has been cut from the game for being dog shit. And with the chain so that infinitely recharges, you have infinite ammo. However, in both cases, these weapons just aren't as effective as other weapons or combos, which is why this is your fault for purposefully not engaging with the game's sandbox and not the fault of the game. Not for the first four chapters, 0 to 3. When I popped in this new Ultra Kill update, I said, okay, I haven't played in six months, I'm not a very good Ultra Kill player, I'm just gonna pick Violent, the hardest difficulty, and screw around like I did before and see how far I make it. And it was the same story. Fight after fight was pretty easily passed by mindlessly dashing around and headshotting everyone and using the charge shot of the starting pistol. 
The entire prelude is filled with combat encounters that do nothing to make you feel like any other tactic is necessary to experiment with, due to how overwhelmingly powerful you are from the first room. How does it not encourage experimentation? The game hands you other weapons and weapon mods, and the style meter is there to push you into experimenting with other weapons and combos. On top of that, enemies have their specific weaknesses which can be exploited in a million different ways. Is that not enough encouragement for you? Oh, the hideous mass boss fight. This guy looks scary. Nope, just hop around and spam pistol until he dies. I mean, I could use other weapons, but this is already pretty effective, and the ammo is infinite. All I gotta do for more health is do a charge shot up in his face and I'm all good again. I don't need to do anything else, cause there's no problem to solve here. Notice how in his gameplay the style meter completely vanishes. And I love how he says the pistol is effective against the boss, but at the same time, the gameplay shows the boss taking fuck all damage, which literally goes to disprove his point. Just using other weapons to beat it faster doesn't equal fun. What the fuck kind of logic is that? So I guess doing crazy combos to defeat the Marauder in Doom Eternal isn't fun. Why do all that when I can just shoot him with a regular shotgun and he will eventually die? I mean, he's bitching and moaning how the game doesn't encourage him to swap weapons or try out combos, even though it literally does. Enemies have their weaknesses and different weapons and combos are more effective against specific enemies. I mean, I guess he just wants the game to quite literally force him to use other combos by practically playing itself. Not to me. If I were dying dozens of times by doing this dumb strategy, I'd feel like I should play with more weapons. I find it ironic that he says that because he literally did an Elden Ring livestream recently, where he keeps dying and refuses to change his strategy or go searching for more runes. Oh, by the way, it's the same livestream where he said it's a charity livestream, but the charity is for a PlayStation 5 so he can review God of War Ragnarok. I mean, that tells you everything you need to know about him. Also, if you look at the gameplay, he is literally on the verge of death. Is that not enough of a hint for you? Not to mention, that Ultra Kill will literally have two more harder difficulties added. How's that for a hint? And that would be fun, because I would be solving a problem. The story doesn't change until the V2 boss fight, and that is one of my central issues with this game's design and the way the fanbase defends it. I hear all the time that it's not about being forced to play well, it's about being stylish, cause styling on enemies is fun. If I want surviving the game to be challenging, I'm missing the point. Well, then why is the V2 boss fight so demanding? Maybe because it's a skill check? You know, like the Marauder from Doom Eternal. Sounds exactly like what you wanted, so where's the problem? What is the problem? I'm not complaining that it's a hard boss fight, I got my ass kicked by him the first time, and I got my ass kicked again this time. Maybe because you refused to learn the game and stubbornly kept sticking to only the pistol. Blame no one but yourself for that. That's good, I actually had to play well to beat him. But doesn't that go against what everyone says? That the challenge of Ultra Kill comes from going for P rank or whatever? Why not have both? Is that impossible, or is your brain just so smooth that you cannot process that possibility? I'm going with the latter option. Not the actual passing of the game's levels? Is this supposed to be a hard skill-based game, or not? You can literally beat Doom Eternal with a fucking pistol that has been cut out from the game for being too shitty, what's your point? Why haven't you ever criticized Doom Eternal for this exact same shit? Oh right, you just have a hate boner for Ultra Kill for whatever reason. I mean, dude. If you don't like the game, that's fine, but don't sit here and act like the game is horribly designed just because it's different from Doom. If all you want to do is style on fools, maybe you'd be happy with an endless arena of enemies that just stand there not attacking, and you can style to your heart's content with no cumbersome challenges getting in your way. I, on the other hand, want the game to present a challenge overall, not just in an end-of-level ranking system. The game literally does present a challenge. It just so happens that your way of going about overcoming it is tedious and stubborn. That's why I'm happy to see a difficult boss fight finally. It doesn't make me use every single option and tactic there are, no game is gonna do that, but it pushes me to experiment a little more, and that's what a game needs to do. The problem is that the game does nothing in the levels leading up to this boss fight to make you feel like any real strategy is actually important. 
There are five stages in the prelude, and three stages in the Limbo chapter, that hardly contain a sliver of demanding combat to make me stop relying on runaway charge pistol spam. I am trying so hard not to bring up Doom Eternal's pistol to counter every point right now. Your style meter literally suffers because of your stubborn gameplay, which means you don't get to reap its rewards. I'm convinced at this point that this motherfucker is purposefully making his experience as miserable as possible. Just like he did on the Elden Ring chair route to your livestream. And then suddenly you're fighting the hardest enemy in the game that's treating you like you're already a seasoned veteran. First of all, that's not the hardest enemy in the game. That would be Minos Prime. Second of all, it's not asking you to be a seasoned veteran, it's asking you to put what you've learned to use against it. Which is what you wanted. But now you're bitching and moaning that the game puts up a roadblock against your shitty pistol strategy. It's like raising a child for 18 years and handing them everything in life, never asking them to do anything like cook, clean, work, fix something, and then suddenly kicking them out on the street and saying, find a way to survive or die, kid, good luck. That was quite literally the worst fucking analogy I've ever heard in my life, equating learning a video game to raising a fucking child. Considering this guy adores Doom Eternal, I'm hoping to fuck he doesn't have kids. That's no way to raise a strong person and set them up for success. After V2, the game goes back to being pretty easy to pass with a runaway charge pistol spam. You can say the same for Doom Eternal after the Marauder. Sure, he appears again, but when he's not present, just use any weapon and chip away at enemies while infinitely recharging your supplies with Chainsaw and Flame Belch. Or just shoot him tediously until he dies whenever he does show up. Again, where's that same energy for Doom? And I just don't agree with this kind of structure. If you think it's fine, well, okay. I know there's plenty of people who enjoy freestyling in a vacuum, but I don't want to feel like the skillful play is just occasionally demanded here and there and sprung on me out of nowhere. So, like Doom Eternal with the Marauder? I want a game that makes me feel like I'm leveling up due to the escalating challenging nature of the level design and AI, eventually testing my learned skills with boss fights. Congratulations, you literally just described every single player video game on planet Earth. So much of this game's depth is easy to overlook because of the poor balance of the first four chapters, and that's why I said there's no enemy specific weaknesses. Look, I've seen all the comments listing all the vulnerabilities and tactics for different enemies. Okay, that's fair, but that's not the point. Then what is the point, you absolute fucking Neanderthal? You bitched and moaned that enemies don't have weaknesses, and when you were presented with said weaknesses, you deflect and try to switch the goalpost by saying, oh, that's not what I meant. <laughs> but now you see why I told you guys to keep in mind how he's trying to paint ultra kill players as being unable to take criticism. It's ironic because this guy is the one who is objectively wrong and he is refusing to take the L. The point is that it's so easy to play the game and never notice them because you can spend like 15 levels not noticing anything. The game literally has a terminal which tells you the strategy for defeating every enemy. So you are either lying or you are just that fucking stupid. Because the infinite ammo starting pistol and lack of combat intensity make it easy to not notice anything. For as good as Ultra Kill's Act 2 additions and rebalancing are, and for as much as I appreciate the steps towards integrating the style meter into the gameplay loop with health regeneration rewards, the game is still really bad at getting you ready for the difficulty spikes. Finally, in the later parts of the Greed chapter, in Act 2, I feel like I can't play dumb anymore. And that still didn't stop you when playing Elden Ring. I mean, the criticism he is applying to this game can literally be applied to every video game in existence. You can play like an absolute idiot and still beat the game, so how is it the game's fault that you are deliberately choosing not to play it how it's intended? And it is even more ironic when you realize that this is the same guy who criticized people for doing exactly that with Doom Eternal. And it's a great feeling, especially with the rebalancing the game is seen in certain AI and me being punished for not engaging in the style meter. Ultra Kill starts to feel like a pretty fun game outside of personal style challenges. <laughs> so you literally admit that you were deliberately destroying your own enjoyment of the game by playing with the pistol only. If this doesn't convince you guys that he's just looking for a reason to bitch, then I don't know what will. And that's where this Act 2 update succeeds. Before this update, I really only had fun in the cyber grind, because the cyber grind made me stop playing dumb. Now, Act 2 feels more like the cyber grind. The pressure is really turned up. 
Just look at the footage. I'm no professional, obviously, but I'm using projectile boosts, timing my railgun shots to refill health, flying around with the whiplash. It's fun. So why weren't you doing that before? It's not the game's fault that you chose to ignore its mechanics. It's fun because it's helping me be victorious. I'm not looking at the style meter or ranking system at all. I'm playing this way because it's helping me survive. It's making me enjoy the ultra kill combat loop in a way that I wasn't before. And that is the point I need to get to for me to be interested in the extra stylish stuff, which I'm finally starting to experiment with a little bit. You can also survive with just a pistol. Hell, I'm pretty sure you can beat V2 with just a pistol. In fact, someone did do exactly that. I'll leave the link to the video in the description. But it just goes to show that it's not necessary for you to interact with the other mechanics to survive. It's just simply not fun. And that proves my point that this guy has no other issue except his own stubbornness and stupidity. And before he tries to say that I'm proving his point, the same logic applies to any video game in existence, Doom Eternal included. So cope and seed. I'm not gonna care about learning how to ricochet coin tosses if I'm not entertained by the basics of combat. The challenge of the game makes me start to enjoy the combat, and from there, the experimentation begins. The two new levels are really good. I like the art direction a lot, the underwater level is a cool change of pace and leads to some interesting combat rooms. I love the level where you're on the docks on the ocean, it just looks awesome. And that Leviathan boss fight? Mwah! Excellent. Probably my favorite fight in the game. I loved figuring out his patterns and where I need to jump over his devastating attacks. I could really feel the benefit of high aerial movement, and it was awesome to get on his back and just wail on his weak spot. But wait, I thought you said enemies didn't have any weaknesses. Oh wait, actually, you backtracked and said that the weaknesses don't encourage plays like that, because you can just rely on the pistol. What happened there, buddy? Some Act 2 combat rooms have shrines that provide buffs to enemies, and you gotta kill enough enemies in the room to expose the shrine and break it. I love it. Some really cool combat puzzles to keep things fresh. Some of my favorite moments came from these more claustrophobic encounters, which I assume not everyone likes, cause they like to just fly around and do whatever in style with no consequence. But I like it when a game throws limitations my way, and it's nice to see Ultra Kill say, no, you can't just fly around the air here and run away, you don't have the space. The new rocket launcher is cool, but its utility wasn't too obvious for me. I ended up not using it because the update launched without the ability to rebind the weapon key, so it was too awkward to integrate into my gameplay. I've experimented with it a little bit since then, and I've seen videos doing crazy things with this weapon, so I'm sure there's a bunch of possibilities. People are riding the rockets, and that's just crazy. It's stuff like that that makes me really understand why people love this game so much. Yet despite all of that, you are still going to upload this video and bitch about the very non-issue you were bitching about throughout the majority of this video. The whiplash has been rebalanced to build up hard damage if you're abusing it, which is cool because the insane mobility it grants can definitely trivialize fights sometimes. Looking at the patches, this seems to be something that's still being adjusted, so I'm not going to comment further on it. I like the direction they're taking though. You hear how positive I'm being? It's because when talking about the changes, I'm really inspired by where the game's going. But when I talk about the problems the changes haven't addressed, I get negative all over again. The first four chapters of Ultra Kill still need serious work to lead the player up to the insanity of the later levels. Without that good pacing, a player can arrive at those later fights having learned nothing, and now it's like they're starting from zero just trying to make it through. At this point, I'm really looking forward to what comes next for Ultra Kill. I hope the creative boss fights keep coming, I hope the intense combat encounters continue to add new, fresh elements, I hope the balance continues to tighten, and I hope they push further in the direction of making the style meter and other mechanics important to the gameplay. And if they're not going to straight up change it, I would love to see an option to play a version of Ultra Kill that has limited ammo that is regenerated with the style meter. That will not happen, simply because the game is not designed around ammo management. You claim to be an expert on game design, but you cannot comprehend the idea of any arena shooter being different to Doom Eternal. I think that says a lot. That's a game I want to play. And that's it. It may be the game you want to play, but it sure as shit isn't the game everyone else wants to play. But with that, we are finally done with this dog shit video. I really don't think there is anything else that needs to be said. Well, I'm gonna go do something else now to replenish the brain cells I lost watching this horrible review. 
like eating some food for example. I recommend you to do the same. Be sure to like and subscribe to boost me in the algorithm. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.